Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So just for the record, if my voice sounds a little bit rough, it's because I've just been sick with the flu for a week. So you know why. Today I wanted to go over the subject of impulse shopping and wanted to give you six tips on how to stop doing it and most importantly how to prevent it in the long run as well. Now, why is impulse shopping such a bad thing? Well, I think there's various reasons to why impulse shopping is a bad habit. And here is two of the most important ones to me. So first of all, you're not dealing with your vulnerability in a very constructive way. What you're getting when you buy something to make yourself feel better is a quick fix and that won't last very long. Before you know it, you're on the run for the next fix to make you feel better again. The second reason why I am not a fan of impulse shopping is because you'll end up with overfilled desks, drawers. You'll just end up with a lot of items and products that you don't even use. And not only is it a waste of our planet's resources, it's also a waste of your own time and money. Money that you could spend better elsewhere on things that actually matters to you. Like for example, saving up for a travel or something similar. Now, impulse shopping is very well known in especially the fashion area, but you can take these tips and use them in almost any area. So the idea is that after watching this video, you should feel empowered and inspired to deal with your vulnerability in a much more constructive way. And in that way, actually grow strong through these difficult periods of your life that you go through. Relying on materialistic goods to make you feel better is actually maybe what stands in the way of becoming the person that you really want to be and becoming happy. So with all of this being said, let's have a look at the six tips to get you started. Now, first of all, it is kind of important that you learn to distinguish between compulsive shopping and impulse shopping. If you are a compulsive shopper, you use new purchases to deal with difficult emotions like anxiety and stress. This is why it is so important not to let this become a habit because you'll keep ignoring the real problem and you'll stand in your own way of actually becoming better and growing stronger. If you are a impulse shopper, you might see something in a shop or a window that you desire in that particular moment and before you know it, you are on your way home with that item, but you won't actually end up being happy with that item. No matter if you're shopping for groceries or if you're shopping for clothes, it can be a very helpful tool to make a shopping list, especially if you're one of those people who get tempted very easily. So always make a list, stick to that list, make it a rule for yourself that you don't come home with anything else than what you have on your list and that will just make your life so much easier. I have already made a video guide with how to plan your fashion purchases, so I'm gonna make sure to link that video down below for you guys. I have also made a blog post, so if you are more into the written recap of that video or that guide, I'm gonna make sure to link that one down below as well. So as many of you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, we make weekly food plans every Sunday. So that means that every Sunday I sit down with either some of our cookbooks or some of the cookbook apps I have on my phone and I pick out a few recipes for the week to come. So we decide what to eat on weeknights on the following week and we also decide what we want to eat for lunch, what kind of healthy snacks we want, breakfast, breakfast everything. And in that way, we just make life a lot easier for ourselves in a busy everyday life. That is both to make sure that we eat as healthy as possible, but also save the time and the energy and the temptation that it is to go to the local grocery every single day. Because let's be honest, mostly you end up coming home with something that wasn't on your list because you were hungry or something similar. So that's a great way of just staying out of that situation where you come home with a lot of unnecessary products. When it comes to shopping clothes, the capsule wardrobe system has definitely helped me a lot with controlling my shopping habits. And that is because I know that it's mainly when the seasons change, I am allowed to actually add something new to my wardrobe. Often I actually just shop things that I've stored away from previous seasons, so I shop my own closet in that way, which is much more sustainable, it's better for my economy, and it's a fun way of 
um, adding something new to my wardrobe. Of course, I am allowed to add a few new things to my wardrobe every once in a while. And like I said, that is only every three months. So I generally just stay away from everything that can tempt me. And I spend a lot more time considering new purchases because I don't just rush out to buy it. And also I try to be creative with what I already had instead. This of course doesn't mean that if I wear something out in the middle of season, I can't buy a new replacement but it is important to kind of be strict with yourself and follow the rules, especially in the beginning. So I like to plan out my shopping when it comes to fashion months ahead. Sometimes I even have something on my wish list for an entire year before taking the plunge. And sometimes I end up not purchasing it anyway because I discover that I'm doing fine without that particular item. This is a good exercise in itself, um, having something on your on your wish list for a long time because then you'll really consider if this is something that you need or want um, and what kind of difference it would even make if you had that item in your wardrobe. Now let's have a look at the word need. It is pretty important that you learn to distinguish the words need and want, especially if you are a compulsive or impulse shopper. There should be a good balance between these two words. So if you only buy things out of desire or because you want them, you are probably ignoring your vulnerability, especially if you use materialistic goods as a way to make yourself feel better. But like I said, it's definitely a balance that you need to learn how to master. It is not about depriving yourself from what truly makes you happy. It's about being honest to yourself and not to stand in your own way of what really makes you happy. So huge season sales and window shopping or I'm just looking is kind of all unnecessary situations to put yourself in if you are easily tempted. The easiest solution would to just keep yourself away from these situations completely. But there's definitely also the possibility of teaching yourself to have a more mindful approach to, for example, season sales. Saving money on an item during a sale that you are gonna purchase at some point anyway is definitely no crime. It's definitely something that I would do myself. And it's also way better than filling the basket with a lot of things that you didn't even know that you wanted or needed, but that all just end up there because it was a bargain. Um, we all know what happens with these items. They will probably pile up in your wardrobe with the tags on them and everything and you won't end up being nearly as happy about these items as the ones that you really consider and that you've been wanting for a long time. So lastly, I have gone over the term vulnerability quite a few times during this video. And I've gone over the fact that using shopping as a way of dealing with your vulnerability or when you're dealing with difficult emotions will not help you or make you feel better in the long run because you're ignoring the real problems. So in that way, you're actually standing in your own way of getting stronger, wiser and happier. Sure, it can be a quick fix to grasp for something materialistic when you feel particularly down or sad or angry, but this joy is very superficial and it will leave you back to square one before you know it. So it is time that you face your vulnerability and that you dig into that instead of grasping for your credit cards. In this situation, it can be very helpful to use the acronym HALT. H-A-L-T. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired, which are all words that we can relate to as difficult emotions. And yeah, these may all trick you into thinking that a little retail therapy is a good thing. Instead of going deep in with retail therapy, it is much better to kind of face these difficult emotions and figure out what you can do to make yourself feel better instead. There can be many reasons why we experience these difficult emotions, but if I feel tired and hungry, I like to make myself a nutritious meal and even maybe work out for just 20 or 30 minutes. That will just make me feel so much better than before and I will be left with that feeling of, oh, I'm so glad I did this for myself. And if I feel lonely, I try to set up a date where I can catch up with my friends or 
invite over some family or something similar to kind of fill that void. If you're going through a particularly rough time, it can even be an option to seek some professional help. I have done that myself several times, both throughout my teen years, but also during my adulthood. And it's helped me a lot dealing with both my social anxiety, anxiety in general as well, but also um, dealing with memories from my troublesome childhood. You actively have to do something to change these difficult emotions and these thought patterns um, and these different states of your mind. But I can tell you that it is worth all the effort. You will come out on the other side so much stronger, so much happier than a new pair of shoes will ever make you. So that's it for today, guys. I really hope you found this video inspiring and that it can kind of kickstart your way of looking at real happiness in your own life. To me, one of the most valuable things here in life is being together with my husband, with my family and with my best friends. It is about being the best version of myself, full of energy, to be present in all that I do. So before you go, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as well, because I would love to have you around. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye guys.